My name is Luke. Welcome back to another Interbotics tutorial. Today, we're going to be taking a look at landmark-based navigation. What is landmark-based navigation? A landmark-based navigation system allows you to do the following. Denote areas of interest as landmarks with special fiducial markers. In this case, we use April tags. Then you can explore an area with your robot to find these landmarks. And finally, once you have a good enough map of an area, along with the saved locations of the landmarks, you can localize yourself at any point within the explored map and navigate to the position of whatever landmark you want. Just a reminder that all relevant links are in the description down below. This video is going to be split into five parts. The first being an introduction of the new landmark modules package. The second being an introduction of the new Excess Locobot landmark nav package. Third, we're going to create landmarks for those packages. Then we're going to explore an environment to find the landmarks. And finally, we are going to navigate to those found landmarks. So first, we're going to be taking a look at the Landmark Modules package. This package contains helpful scripts, libraries, and objects to work with landmarks in your own packages. First, we're going to be talking about uh, the Landmark library, which provides useful helper functions to calculate things like uh, the move base goal and things like that. It also stores data about landmarks, like the transform to the static frame, visualization data, and whether it's mounted, et cetera. Um, the next one is the uh, landmark collections library, which also provides useful help or helper functions to work with a large amount of landmarks, uh, mostly for loading and saving, but it also helps to publish large amounts of them uh, to the TF tree. So we're going to come over to the repository and take a look at uh, what specifically the landmark libraries use for their configuration files. So each configuration file is defined by landmarks, and underneath them we have a Boolean representing whether they are mounted or not. And mounted just means whether it's uh, stuck to a vertical surface like a wall. Um, and then if it is mounted, what is the offset for that? And what that means is how far the robot should navigate to that landmark uh, away from the wall. Then the ID, which is just the April tag ID of the landmark, uh, the label, which is just a human readable name given to the tag, and then whether or not it is set. And set just means uh, whether or not the robot has found the landmark yet uh, when it's exploring. Okay, um, we can take a look a, at an example of a landmark configuration file. So like I said, we have the landmark, which is represented just by the ID of the landmark. See, it matches right here. We have a label, this one's just landmark one, whether or not it's mounted, the offset for navigation, and if it is set or not. Once the robot finds the landmark in space, it will save the uh, transform location to a fixed static frame, usually a frame titled landmark. Uh, going back out, we will now talk about uh, the launch files. There are two relevant launch files. We have landmark manager and then TF map to landmark. The landmark manager launch file is something that you just include in higher level packages, uh, provides helpful arguments uh, like landmark config, which just points it to the, which points it to the uh, proper configuration file that was shown earlier. A fixed frame name, and that's usually just landmarks. Uh, this is to uh, separate it from the rest of the TF tree. So you'll have the robot going one direction and the landmarks going the other direction. Then you have the observation frame. Uh, because we're using RealSense, they use a camera color optical frame as their, uh, the location where the camera emits. Uh, so we'll just be using that as the default argument. And then finally, standalone tags. And that is uh, pointing to the direction of the uh, tags configuration files found in the perception modules package. The next one we're going to be looking at is the TF map to landmark launch file. Uh, and this launches the TF map to uh, landmark node, which simply publishes a 
transformation between the map and the landmark uh, TF tree, and then exits. And you can specify uh, the name of the fixed frame and the name of the origin frame. Okay, next we're gonna be looking at the scripts from this package. We have three main scripts, a landmark finder, landmark manager, and TF map to landmark. Landmark finder, uh, the most important part of this script is this function right here, uh, timer callback. So periodically, it will take camera data, analyze that for April tags, and if it contains an April tag in that image, it will publish a transformation between uh, the fixed frame landmarks and the landmark that is specified or is found. Next, we have Landmark Manager. Landmark Manager is a useful uh, command line application that allows you to uh, create your own landmarks. So instead of directly filling out the uh, landmark configuration files, this will walk you through it step by step, makes it very easy. And we'll be taking a look at this more in depth later. And then finally, the TF map to landmark just publishes an identity transform between the origin frame and the fixed frame. Again, the landmarks, and then it quits. And that's it for the Interbotics Landmark Modules package. All right, next we're gonna talk about the Exus Locobot Landmark Nav package. This package builds on top of the normal Exus Locobot Nav package, uh, the Landmark Modules that we just talked about, and the Perception Modules package. And this provides your Locobot a method to traverse a map to find landmarks and then later come back to those landmarks just by selecting it within the application. It's built on top of a couple of uh, smaller nodes from other packages, specifically the TF map to landmark, landmark finder, and landmark manager uh, nodes from the previous landmark modules package as well as move base from uh, the navigation stack. Uh, this just helps your robot uh, plan paths to landmarks and then provides your Kabuki base with velocity commands to get it there. And then static transform pub from the perception toolbox, uh, which just takes static transforms and publishes them to the static transform tree. Uh, and then you can find all of the uh, Lookabot navigation nodes and uh, uses in its own structure section. So we're gonna go through step by step. First, gonna look at the different landmarks. This is exactly the same as before. This is just a separate place to hold your uh, landmark configuration files. This one is specifically for the landmark nav stack. Uh, next, the launch files. We have Landmark Manager, uh, which includes the Landmark Manager launch file from the uh, Landmark Modules package, and then the main Exus Locobot Landmark Nav launch file. So here you can see that really the only difference between the last one is that we specify a different location for the Landmark configuration file. And then for the main landmark nav file. This one's a little bit more complicated, as you can see. Uh, the highlights being that we always launch the static transform publisher and the TF map to landmark uh, nodes. And it also splits it up into two different functions. We have mapping which is the first phase where you explore your environment, looking for the landmark uh, tags around your environment. And second is the localization function, where you navigate to those found landmarks. In the mapping group, you have landmark finder being launched, as well as the April tag uh, node from the perception toolbox and the entire uh, Exus Locobot navigation stack with all of the relevant 
uh, arguments filled out. In the localization group, you have the Exus Locobot Python uh, control being launched and the nav2 landmark node being launched. And we'll talk about that in a second. And then this will launch in a separate screen. And you specify the landmark configuration location. For scripts, we only have the nav to landmark node. And this just presents a simple command line application. Um, it shows you all of the landmarks that your robot has found and is and are validated. Um, asks you to choose one of those tags to navigate to. And then once it gets there, it plays a fun little sound once MoveBase has determined that it has reached its goal. Uh, for this script, you only have to change your model. So for example, if your robot was a Locobot PX100, you would set this model to PX100. And just change that for whatever arm you have. So for creating landmarks, you can do that using the Landmark Manager tool. And we'll take a look at that right now. So if you open a terminal on your robot and use this command right here, you can launch the tool. So ROS launch, interbotics, excess locobot, landmark nav. And you're going to do landmark manager dot launch, hit enter. And it presents this neat command line application. Uh, so if you see these little parentheses around your tags, that just means that those tags already exist within the configuration file. As you add landmarks, they will have parentheses around them. So we're going to start with five. I'm just going to overwrite the ones that we already have. The landmark label, we will call this landmark one. And is the tag mounted? Yes or no? So sure, we'll mount this one and the, the offset in meters. Like I said before, that is just the offset away from the wall or away from the tag that the robot will navigate to uh, when it's navigating. So offset in meters, we will set that to, let's say, one meter. Do I want to enter another landmark? Sure, why not? We'll go with 820 this time. And then the landmark label, we'll call this landmark two. Let's call it three, because I think we already have two set. And then is the tag mounted? This one will not be mounted. So this means it's on the floor or on some other uh, horizontal surface. So it's laying flat. Do we want to enter another landmark? No, we don't. And then it dies and you can safely uh, control C out of that. If we ROS CD into interbotics, excess locobot landmark nav, and then landmarks. There, where is it? Yes, it isn't landmarks. So CD landmarks, we can cat the landmarks.yaml file and see that we have indeed added these landmarks. So we set five and 820. And if you see with 413, we have already seen this uh, probably when I was testing this before. Um, so you can see that set is equal to true and TF also has data associated with it. Uh, so the child frame ID will always be the name of the label. Uh, the frame ID will always be the fixed frame that we have set before in TF uh, map to landmark. And then you have its uh, quaternion rotation and its XYZ translation. And now to do mapping and localization, we're gonna take our Locobot to the workshop where it'll have plenty of room to find the landmarks. So now that we're in the workshop, we're gonna do a little bit of mapping followed by localization, which means just navigating to the landmarks that we found. And then finally, we're gonna show what you can do when you have some special landmarks. Uh, so first, we're gonna activate uh, the mapping part of the landmark nav package. So that is the first part in the mapping on the README. So it's going to be ROS launch, interbotics, XS locobot, landmark nav, then XS locobot, landmark nav.launch, 
we're going to set the correct uh, model, which is the Locobot PX100. We are going to set mapping equal to true. And we are going to start a new RTAB map uh, map by setting it to uh, dash D. There we go. So now it's mapping. And normally you would control your Locobot with a uh, PS or a PlayStation joystick, but I don't have one on hand right now, so we're instead just going to navigate using the uh, Kabuki um, uh, Teleop uh, keyboard package. It's a bit more clunky and you don't have as much control over like, the camera and the arm, but it uh, suffices for our purposes. And then finally, we are going to open the remote view where we can actually uh, see when we have seen the landmarks. And then eventually when we do navigation, we can see where the move base goals will be on our map. So we will navigate. First, we're going to try to see that landmark. OK, and then the next part of this uh, package is the localization portion. And here we will launch a, a nav to landmark package, as well as the navigation stack. And it will open up a window command line application where we can then choose which landmark we want to navigate to. Okay, so it's loaded and we can see that we can navigate to landmark 3, uh, which is tag 820, or landmark 5, or landmark 1, which is tag 5. And landmark 1 is mounted and its offset is 1, and landmark 3 is not mounted. So here we will choose 820, and it should navigate back to right there. I could actually show on here. This is the map that RTAB map built, and you can see the navigation goals. So if we come over here, we can hide uh, everything, and you can see that landmark three goal is directly underneath the robot. And finally, if you have these special landmarks, say the Kabuki Base Charging Dock, uh, once you get to those, you can activate certain functions that allow you to interact with those. Uh, this is separate from the landmark nav package, but it's just helpful to, in, uh, to think about it and to incorporate these into your workflows. Uh, so, for example, I want to auto dock once we are at the Kabuki Base Dock. Um, so I would activate the Python control package in the Excess Locobot control um, package <laughs> and then launch the auto docking script in the Python examples uh, from the Locobot ROS repository. After watching this tutorial, you should know how to use the Landmark Modules package and its libraries to work with landmarks and able tags. 
You should know how to use the Landmark Navigation Package to explore your environment and navigate to those found landmarks. And you should know that you can use April Tag fiducial markers to do things other than perception-based tasks. Thanks for watching. We hope you enjoyed it and maybe learned something new today. We'll have links in the description below to any of the kits or hardware that you saw in the video. Remember, anytime any of that's purchased, it helps us as a company keep producing free content. Um, please feel free to comment in the comments below on things that you're interested in or questions you might have or any ideas about future videos that you'd want to see us get into. We're always interested in seeing how we can help the community keep innovating. Thanks again for watching.